In this lecture, we are going to learn about another very important concept of object oriented programming, which is inheritance. So, in this lecture, we will learn what is inheritance and we will also understand why we should use inheritance, what is the advantage of using inheritance. And we will also learn how to implement inheritance in TypeScript. So, let's say we have a class called person and this person class has a name property, a gender property and a date of birth property. And it also has a method called calculate age, which will calculate the age of the person based on his date of birth. Now, we also want to create a class called employee. And this employee class also is going to have name, gender and date of birth property. And along with these properties, it is going to have a salary property, a bonus property, and it is going to have the calculate salary property. And we also want this calculate age property in this employee class as well. And let's say we also want to create another class called athlete. There also we are going to have the name, gender and date of birth property and the calculate age method. And along with these properties and methods, we also want to have a country property which that athlete is representing and the number of medals that athlete has won. And along with that, we also want to have a method in that class called participate to check in which competitions this athlete has participated. Okay, so if you notice, if we create these three classes like this, in these three classes, we have three common properties and we have one common method, this calculate age method. Now, I have not specified it here in the diagram, but this calculate age method should also be there for the employee and athlete to calculate their age based on their date of birth. So, if we create these classes separately, you will see that we are basically rewriting the same code. We are rewriting these three properties in these two classes and we are rewriting this calculate age method in these two classes now instead of doing it like this we know that this employee and this athlete it is going to have this name gender and date of birth property and also the calculate age method so what we can do is we can create this person class which will have these three common properties and this common method something like this and then we can create our employee class where we will only specify the extra properties which we want to have for the employee class. For example, salary property and bonus property as well as the calculate salary method. And rest other properties, that means the name, gender and date of birth property and the calculate age method, this employee class can inherit from the person class because person class already have these properties and methods and the same properties and methods we also want in employee class so employee class can inherit from the person class and when the employee class will inherit from the person class in the employee class we will have access to these properties and this method as well same thing we can do for the athlete class we can create an athlete class and there we can specify what extra properties we want for that class in this case, the country property and the medals property. And what extra method do we want for the athlete class? In this case, the participate method. And then the athlete class can inherit from the person class. And when the athlete class will inherit from the person class, athlete class will also have access to name, gender and date of birth property as well as calculate age method. And this is called as inheritance. Here, one class is inheriting properties and methods from other class. In this way, we are not rewriting the same properties and same methods in other classes. We are simply reusing it from a base class. So inheritance allows us to create new classes based on an existing class. The existing class is called as the base class or parent class. In our case, the person class, it will be the base class or it will be the parent class. And the new classes which we create, which we derive from the base class is called as derived class or child class. So in our example, the employee class and the athlete class, it will be the child class or you can also call it as derived class. So by using inheritance, we can avoid code duplication. So it allows us to reuse a piece of code. And this also promotes code maintainability and it makes our code more organized. Let's understand inheritance with a practical example. So here I have this person class where we have this name, date of birth and gender property. Let's also go ahead and let's create the calculate age property. And from here we will simply return the age of the user. And for that I'm simply going to use this new date constructor. And on that 
we are going to use get full year method so it is going to return us the current year from there we are going to subtract the year of the date of birth so for that again i'll use this new date constructor to that we are going to pass the date of birth so simply let's pass dob this dob is going to be a string value so from that string it is going to calculate the date and time on that again we are going to use get full year method so from that date and time we want to get the full year and we are simply going to subtract it from the current year now here we have this error and it says cannot find okay it should be this dot dob okay so this is our calculate age method so we have this person class where we have these three properties and this calculate age method now i'm going to create one more class and i'm going to call this class employee okay and what we are going to do is in this employee class also we want to have name date of birth and gender property and this calculate age method so instead of creating those properties here what we are going to do is we are going to use this extends keyword and we are going to extend this person class okay so here we will say extends person this simply means that whatever property we have inside this person class and whatever methods we have inside this person class same properties and methods we also want in employee class so this employee class is extending this person class it is going to have all the properties and methods of this person class plus it can have its own properties and methods okay so for this employee class i also want to have let's say salary property which is going to be of type number and it is also going to have bonus property which is again going to be of type number and it is also going to have a method get salary and this method will calculate the salary of the employee based on his actual salary plus bonus so from here we will simply return salary plus bonus okay and again it should be this dot salary okay now we are going to create a constructor to initialize the salary and bonus property okay now when we are going to initialize when we are going to call this constructor and when this constructor will be called it will be called when we are going to create an instance of this employee class so when we are going to call this constructor at that time we also want the value for the name date of birth and gender property so here i'm also going to specify those properties i'm going to specify a name property or let's simply call it as n which is going to be of type string then i'm going to have the date of birth property which is going to be of type string and i want to have gender property so i'll simply call it as gen again it is going to be of type string and along with these properties we also want to get the value for salary and bonus property so here i'll simply call it as salary which is going to be of type number and bonus which is again going to be of type number and now what we are going to do is first we want to initialize the name date of birth and gender property of this employee class and to initialize those values we are going to call the constructor of this person class from within the constructor of this employee class and to call the constructor of this person class this base class this super class from within this employee class which is the child class the derived class all we are going to do is we are going to use this super keyword and after that we will use a set of parentheses so this super here when we are calling it like a method it is going to call the constructor of this person class it is going to call this constructor and this constructor is expecting value for the name date of birth and gender parameter and we are going to receive that value inside this constructor as well so here we are going to pass n for name dob and gen and you will see that that error is gone and after this we are also going to initialize salary and bonus so that initialization we will do inside this child class constructor so to initialize name date of birth and gender property we are calling the constructor of parent class now to initialize the salary and bonus 
because these properties we have defined inside this employee class we are going to initialize it inside this child class constructor this employee constructor so here we will say this dot salary equals salary and this dot bonus equals bonus now keep in mind that when you are going to do the initialization of the child class properties like this using this keyword it should always happen after you have called the super keyword after you have called the super keyword as a function so these two lines should always come after this super call after the call of the parent class constructor now why is that that's because when we are creating an object of a child class you are essentially creating an object of the parent class first followed by the child class specifics so by calling the super first you ensure that the parent class constructor is executed and the parent class fields are initialized before the child class constructor proceeds and this guarantees that child class has a fully constructed parent object to work with so that's why you should always use this keyword or you should always initialize your child class properties after you have called the constructor of the parent class using this super keyword all right with this now we can go ahead and we can create an instance of this employee class so here i am going to create a variable i'll simply call it as emp equals new employee okay now when we are calling the constructor of the employee class so if you remember when we use the class name followed by a set of parentheses it is basically going to call the constructor of that class so in this case it is going to call the constructor of employee class and when it is going to call the constructor of the employee class that constructor is expecting the value for these parameters name parameter date of birth gender salary and bonus so let's pass that so for the name i'll simply pass john then date of birth again it is going to be a string value let's say 30 august 1991 then gender let's say male salary 10000 bonus let's say 2000 and now let's go ahead and let's log that employee object with this let's save the changes so the application has compiled let's refresh the page and you will see that the employee object has been logged here and in that employee object you have the name property which is john gender male date of birth this value and you also have the salary and bonus property so in this way this employee class it is only containing two properties salary and bonus but since it is inheriting from this person class this employee object is also going to have the name date of birth and gender property as well as it is also going to have the calculate age method so let's try to call the calculate age method so here i'll simply say employee dot and you'll see that we have access to calculate age method as well as get salary method so let's call the calculate age method and let's save the changes so for some reason this nan is being returned that might be because here at this line when we are passing date of birth to this date constructor it is not able to calculate the date of birth from that string value but still as you can see we are able to access the calculate age method on this employee object even though this calculate age method is present in person class that's because this employee class is inheriting from the person class so for this employee class also we will have access to the calculate age method and this is what inheritance is in the same way if we want to create an athlete class we can create that class we can specify its specific properties and methods and we can make this class inherit from this person class and how does a class inherit from another class by using the extends keyword so if this employee class wants to inherit from person class we say employee extends person in the same way if the athlete class wants to inherit from person class we can say athlete extends person then in order to initialize the properties of the parent class we use this super keyword we call it as a function and then we also specify the value for the parameters which the parent class constructor is expecting all right now what is the advantage of using inheritance 
inheritance allows us to reuse a piece of code and in this way it allows maintainability of the code this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day